and good morning students so in the previous class i have discussed about chapter 2 in the subject of quality control and quality assurance for income secondary students so in that continuation today i will discuss so the previous classes i have discussed about organization personal responsibilities training hygiene hygiene personal records drug industry location construction uh, the plant and plant layout maintenance Uh, sanitation, etc. Today, I'll talk about the maintenance, environmental maintenance, or environmental controls, and so on. environmental control and its so the number one is the lighting so any pharmaceutical industry there should be an adequate lighting be provided in all areas that means the 30 to 15 candles and coming to the ventilation air filtration and even air heating and for these things adequate ventilation shall be provided and uh, equipment for adequate control for air pressure particularly and even microorganisms and dust humidity and temperature shall be the air filtration systems including pre filters as well as the particulate matter air filters so they shall be used when appropriate on air samples to production area so if air is recirculated to production areas then a measure all measures shall be taken not to control the recirculation of the dust from the production area okay that care should be taken and uh, in areas where air contamination in case occurs uh, during the production so then there shall be adequate exhaust system should be provided or other systems should be provided in order to control the contaminants that is we can how to um, uh, prohibit the contamination then air handling systems should consider the following factors So in this case the placement of air inlet and the outlet ports that is air outlet ports so these should be uh, sited to minimize the entry of airborne particulates or odors from the surrounding areas okay and then outlet should not be uh, sited near the inlets okay there should be some gap so where recirculation of air is acceptable in case then adequate precautions must be taken to ensure that the particulates from a processing area are removed so this is this will usually require an alarm system or an automatic automatic cut off in the event that a filter develops a fault then uh, air handling system for the manufacturing even processing and uh, packing of the particularly penicillins will be completely separated from other the drug products for human use okay this air handling systems the degree of filtration and the uh, air volumes should be matched to the operations involved so then the temperature as well as the humidity conditions should provide a personal comfort will enhance the employee performance because the temperature and humidity should be in the optimum conditions for the comfort of any employee who is working in that particular area where differential pressures are required in case between adjacent areas then suitable monitoring equipment must be provided for example in case solid manufacturing areas so they are usually maintained at a negative pressure in relation to the adjacent room and corridors <clears throat> in order to minimize the possibility of dust migration to these other areas so in case in sterile areas for example computer control of hvac system is more useful hvac air conditioning ventilation and all heat to allow the delicate balancing of various air pressures air flows temperature and humidity next plumbing this is very very important aspect in any pharmaceutical industry so 
in plumbing the potable water shall be supplied the continuous positive project in a plumbing system uh, be of defects to avoid any contamination very very important this the potable water shall meet the standards which are described as per the regulatory authorities and then drains shall be of adequate size and where connected directly to a sewer main drainage sewage shall be provided with an air brake or other mechanical device to prevent the back stiffness so drain should also be regularly disinfected sewage and refuse sewage trash and other refuse in and from the building and immediate premises shall be disposed of an in a safe and sanitary manner so the environmental control and at least best disposal the next is the waste disposal let me see product disposal or anything the waste uh, product disposal please uh, kindly it has to be separated from its packing appropriate so any product to be disposed in an approved landfill site should not be left in uh, impermeable glass or plastic or other containers so which would significantly delay constructions and breaking or crushing of product is also done and disposed in such a way that it does not contaminate the ground water level ground water then incineration processes have preference for the landfill so where in case uh, incineration is used a product in plastic or other inflammable packaging and need not to be separate this is one and then then coming to the printed packaging disposals in case suppose if they wanted to dispose the already printed packaging material then the disposal of the prior of printed packaging component uh what and all including labels inserts and carton proposes no health risk okay however these materials should preferably be incinerated in order to prevent any use then general trash and sewage so in this case normal local services will be usually be adequate for trash and sewage local services exclusive however internal procedures should be sufficiently uh, rigorous and should be uh, monitored uh, in order to ensure that the product and the packaging waste uh, does not get intermixed and the containers used within the plant uh, to accumulate waste material should be clearly marked to donate their designated areas that means designated usage okay there should be labeled properly for which purpose it is that the general trash and sewage then eating facilities okay so eating and drinking uh, are permitted only in separate eating facilities so you cannot uh, sit wherever you desire wherever you want to have the eating drinking and something else that's why the eating and drinking are permitted only in a separate eating facilities well segregated from all production areas production and processing areas the drinking eating smoking tobacco chewing and uh, expectorations are highly prohibited not to anything so smoking is permitted only where an adequate disposal device is provided and apart from the production area prominent signs indicating these rules are posted at entrances to production areas also permanent facilities for breaks and uh, people bringing lunches are required there should be facilities and for break up break for the, the staff and any employee and uh, people who are bringing lunches some, some facilities has to be provided then cafeterias uh the cafeterias in industry serving hot meals are ideal to reduce the amount of food a potential contamination source is being brought into the plant if the if the food itself is served in the uh, cafeterias of the plant so then we can minimize the contamination this is a very big source of food so then washing toilet facilities 
and uh, lockers. Very important is also. So there should be an adequate washing facility should be provided. So including hot and cold water, soap or even detergent or air dryers or single service like disposable towels and clean toilet facilities so which are easily accessible to the working areas. Okay. So this should be provided both cold and hot water, even detergent source, air dryers. Then the toilet rooms to be separate for each sex, that means more than both male and female, and adequate in number, it should be more in number, sufficient in number, and conveniently located to all the areas. Okay. So the, that is very, very important. And hot shower facilities should also be provided, and disinfected soaps are to be provided. Then periodic cleaning of the area, very, very important aspect. Periodic cleaning of the area during each shift is mandatory in yeah, the industry. Complete cleaning with cleansing and disinfectant agents uh, daily and follow up inspection by supervisory person. Whether they have done or not, a supervisor is appointed to supervise the things, whether the cleansing and dis disinfection is, has been done. Okay. And then the specific rest areas. For female employees are provided for exclusively for females. Eating and drinking are not permitted. Uh, foods and beverages for meals and uh, breaks may be stored only in lockers and then removed to a separate eating area. Okay. So whatever they bring the food or beverages for meal that this and all, they should be stored only in the locker. Then they should be removed to a separate eating areas. So areas separated from all aseptic spaces by an Air lock. Then maintenance of sterile areas. Very, very important aspect again maintenance of the sterile areas. That means the sterile area general requirements. What are the general requirements needed? Only the trained personnel should be allowed to process the sterile The layouts and uh, the specifications of the manufacturing facilities and buildings will be such that it will help in. Creating and maintaining the quality, purity, identity, safety of the product being. Then the floors as well as walls, ceilings, they all should be smooth and the hard surfaces are easily cleanable. Now, most precaution has to be taken about the quality of the air, water, steam, and other gases that are quietly used in the manufacturing. Okay, then. An air supply filtered through high efficiency particulate air filters and their positive pressure. And this uh, SOPs should cover issues related to the people, the material, material flow, equipment, solution preparation, and uh, control, etc. Then the there should be a system for uh, monitoring the all these environmental conditions. Then the sanitation and the Sterilization process should be pre validated. Then, a system for again a cleaning and a disinfecting the room and equipment to produce the condition. There, each and every system should be there always. Okay. And the production batches must be released by the authorized person only after thorough scrutiny of all the documents which are quite related to the manufacturing of the product of, of, of that particular batch. Then the floors, uh, continuation floors, walls, and ceilings in sterile areas, particularly sterile suits, they are all subjected to intensive and frequent cleaning and sanitization. Very, very important. They must be composed of smooth, hard surfaces with a minimum of joints. Very smooth. They should be resistant to abrasion, not shed particles, be free from holes and cracks, and sufficiently flexible to accommodate the Building strains and even uh, they should be impervious to water and the sanitation solutions. Then, critical rooms such as those for filling of final containers should preferably have see through glass window. Okay, that the filling of final containers should be see through glass uh, windows to allow supervision without the necessity for accessibility. You can view the and monitor from here only. See through glass. Temperature and the humidity need to be controlled primarily for the comfort of the operator. That already I told you. The most uh, critical factor in aspect uh, 
aseptic processing is the uh, microbial and non viable particulate conditions in air this air is uh, provided by uh, aware of high efficiency particulate high efficiency particulate air and the quality of the air is adjusted to meet the varying needs of the different processing areas so there are basic uh, differences between the production of sterile drug products by aseptic processing and by terminal sterilization this is a difference so the air pressure differential should be monitored automatically and the high efficiency air filters that means hepa filters must be tested regular intervals for the presence of leaks such leaks can also lead to be likely to affect the uh, pressure differences or differentials okay that's the reason the hepa filters has to be checked and uh, tested at a regular interval. cleaning and disinfection of the septic facilities and equipment are off yes important especially in the critical area so in order to minimize the possibility of microbial resistance and the disinfectant uh, should be changed periodically for the uh, to minimize the possibility of the microbial resistance then servicing of hvac equipment and checking of diet filter service spots for needs the physical condition of walls floors and ceilings they are all should be well monitored then the how to control the contamination we'll look into this the control of the contamination there are different types of contaminations okay there are two major types that is main types of the contamination one is living and another one is the non living contamination so what are the living and non living contamination living so we all know the living contamination can occur the sources that means the microorganisms like bacteria molds yeast and viruses they are all living non living uh, nothing but the undesired chemical substances are dust or powder or fibers okay and again uh, these are the two types one is active and inert you know inactive okay so in case of living that means microorganisms uh, uh, these microorganisms can produce the dangerous pathogens okay then the and what are the uh, the types we have seen then the sources of contamination personals the shedding of bacteria carrying particles by millions particularly from skin hair blood saliva nose mouth the person who is working in the industry okay they are all having the bacteria carrying particles by millions of people those who are working particularly the source of a contamination of our skin hair blood saliva nose mouth throat even etc then what about the environment the environment you know from the environment there is a dust dirt soil sand smoke and the ashes then from the building i am talking about sources of contamination one is for the personal who is working then the other one is the environment and the next one is the building so in the building unsealed stone work or brick or mortar or plaster making paint and sawdust brick chippings metal fillings which are generated during the repair or maintenance installation and re uh, restruct, uh, restructuring so during those things in the building we can expect the contamination that is source of contamination then equipment then from the equipment also we can have the contamination that is that's also one of the major source of contamination so what kind of equipment dirty equipments moving machine parts from here and there belt drives materials which are quietly used to lubricate the equipment then raw materials air and water there are all the even the containers and closures so containers and closures packages uh, 
uh, even paper and uh, cardboard, uh, there also this was of the contamination. Then, because of these things, how to control the contamination? I've seen the types and sources of contamination. Let us look into the control of contamination. Controlling contamination in clean rooms. A clean room is a room which the air is supplied, a pressure, that means positive pressure. So there are special filters like in HEPA, which are quite designated or designed to keep, to keep any microorganisms and other part, particles in the air down to define low levels. Okay. The surfaces of all floors, when including walls, seals, fittings, or tops, uh, etc., in a closed clean room, must be they should be hard, even smooth, and uh, non-porous, porous, and non-broken, uh, in order to prevent the shedding of the particles, also to prevent the accumulation of the dust, dirt, and microorganisms, and also to permit the easy and repeated cleaning and disinfecting. Then there should be, there must be no uncleanable gaps, uh, cracks, uh, holes, okay? uh, corners, surfaces, pipes, ducts, fittings, etc., which could harbor the dust, dirt, or microbes. Then access to clean rooms so always must be carefully controlled, and uh, that applies to your people and the things like materials, equipment and even the apparatus, okay? The entry to and uh, exit from the clean room should only be through change rooms and air locks. Then, continue controlling contamination with people. People who is a person who is working in the, that area. That means keep the body, the person who is working in the industry, body, hair, face, hands, and finger, nails clean. And if the if they are having any illness, they have to report illness or cuts or respiratory or gut or skin problems. And uh, follow the return changing and wash up procedure exactly. And then check that your protective clothing is worn properly or not. Do not wear cosmetic related or wristwatches. Leave all personal items like wallets, coins, keys, watches, spoons, six in the room. And do not take papers or even documents or paper materials to clean rooms unless they have been specially put by the competent authority. And even there should not be any eating, achieving, drinking, and smoking in clean room. And uh, do not move vigorously, always move gentle and steadily, less shedding of particles. That's why this walking, that this running, no, they're all not allowed. So no playing about the playing about our signing or whistling. Okay, and keep talking to an absolute minimum. Only not do this, no playing, no signing or whistling. Okay. And avoid coughing and sneezing. These are unavoidable. Leave the clean because they will spread the, uh, they will undergo the transmission through the coughing and the sneezing. The clean room and do not touch other operators and avoid scratching, touching nose and mouth and rubbing hands. Wear gloves here or regularly disinfect them. as instructed in the premises or industry and also always check on worn or damaged garments and torn gloves if it is there please have a check on that particularly on gloves and uh, the garments whatever they wear and keep uh, garments fully fastened fixed firmly and do not unfasten or loosen them okay then control of contamination by Cleaning and disinfection. Cleaning and disinfection. So, the written program and procedures must always be followed exactly in this case. You can control the contamination with the help of cleaning as well as the disinfection. There should be a written program and procedures. And it is necessary to clean 
it is necessary uh, to clean thoroughly first uh, before you disinfect. Okay? First, it, that premises has to be clean. And it is important to ensure that in the cleaning and disinfecting process, we do not create uh, more contamination. That is also very important. And all cleaning and disinfecting all cleaning and uh, disinfecting agents and materials uh, should themselves be clean and not shed fibers or particles particles okay avoid cleaning by using mops and only you can use the auto equipment okay then use vacuum vacuum for sucking dust and do not use the compressed air you can use only vacuum if required, use clean and non fiber shedding clothes for uh, de dusting uh, with great care. Okay, that should be done. Then, also, cleaning has to be done uh, starting from the uh, furthest area to the entrance area. So, then, while cleaning walls and other vertical surfaces, in case uh, work should always start at the top and work down again to avoid to recontamination of parts which are already clean and disinfected top and work down so it is also important that right cleaning and disinfecting agents are used the right dilutions as directed in the standard operating program. very important point then the dilution of disinfectants should be made fresh clean containers and <coughs> Clean containers. They should not be stored for later use. So all cleaning equipment uh, and accessories must themselves be cleaned after use and stored in a clean dry. Then uh, in the next class we'll look into the uh, the avoidance of cross contaminations. We have seen the contamination types of contamination sources of contamination how to minimize the contamination the next is where most important is the avoidance of the cross contamination so this should be right in a good way okay in the next class i will talk about this avoidance of the cross contamination thank you very much